Hello, my name is Nadia Denton. I'm a film curator based in London. On behalf of CineDB Insights, I'm delighted to introduce this interview, which is part of the CineDB Africa Conversation Series, a collection of in-depth encounters with film professionals from across the African continent. CineDB Africa, supported by the Gotha Institute, now has a new home on the e-portal of the Durban Film Art Institute. Today, I am joined by Francesco Capuro, head of the Series Mania Forum. Really pleased to have you with us today, Francesco. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. So what is Series Mania and how big is the event and who is its target audience? Uh, series Mania is uh, one of the biggest events in Europe for TV series. And uh, under the, the brand, there are three main events. One is a Series Mania festival, which is for the general audience, is a festival, it's free. And uh, there is a competition, a jury. It's like a movie festival, but for, for TV series, basically. Mm -hmm. We have guests from all over the world, and it's really uh, enjoyable and fun for, for all the, the festival goers. Then there is a Series Mania Institute, which is our school. Uh, and uh, it's uh, based in Lille, uh, in the northern region of France. And uh, it's a school for screenwriters and producers, basically to train them and uh, to encourage uh, European collaborations in between uh, screenwriters and also international collaboration, of course. And then uh, the third event is the Series Mania Forum, uh, which I run, which is the industry part of, uh, of Series Mania. It takes place during the festival, but it's shorter. It's only last three days. This year it will be from March 21 to 23. And it's a professional gathering of uh, 3,500 professionals, more or less, from all over the world, mainly European, of course, because we are based in France, but really open to, to all the professionals uh, from different uh, countries. And um, it's basically a content development market, uh, meaning that uh, our main focus is to present project in development to potential uh, financiers, could be co-producers, commissioners, distributors, etc. But besides the pitching sessions, and we have many, there are also conferences about the main topics of the industry. Uh, there are, of course, networking events, matchmaking events, uh, parties, uh, and, uh, and so on. So it's getting bigger and bigger every year. And I think that now it's one of not to be missed the event in Europe for all the professionals. And across those three main activities, so there's the festival, there's the market um, and other industry activities, how can Africa-based filmmakers best get involved? They, they can be involved, of course, by being selected uh, in the festival uh, with, with one of their series. Uh, but in the in the in the forum side, uh, in the market side, we we are making a special uh, focus on on Africa, uh, basically through two different initiatives. One is called Dental. It's uh, in partnership with the French CNC. So uh, we uh, make a call for application for projects uh, uh, from Africa, Pacific, and Caribbean country. Uh, we select four. Um, the writers come with their producers. Uh, they have a week of training uh, before Series Mania Forum in Lille, and then they come to pitch their project during Series Mania Forum and meet potential partners, co-producers or broadcasters, etc. And uh, starting from this year, we launched uh, a partnership with the Realness Institute in South Africa. Uh, so uh, we selected with uh, them uh, four projects from uh, Africa, different uh, countries, and they will come to, to Lille, also a couple of days in advance from the start of the forum, they will have a workshop, and then they will pitch their project uh, during Sales Mania Forum. And those initiatives that you've mentioned, are they just for this year or will some of them be ongoing uh, for African <laughs> film professionals? 
No, no, that will be ongoing. Dental, it's, I think, already the, the third year that we are, we are doing that with, um, with the CNC. And um, the partnership with the Real Nest Institute and this uh, lab is called Authentica Series Lab, the name. Uh, it's the fourth year, but we hope that it will be successful and uh, that uh, we will continue in the years to come. Mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, the market, so for filmmakers who are you know, or content creators who are interested in getting involved, they're perhaps not part of these initiatives you mentioned, but want to come to the market maybe to see the opportunities to sell their content. How can they best get engaged in terms of that? Is it a case of just attending and you know meeting the professionals or are there certain structures that they can um, be aware of uh, to help them facilitate meetings? Yeah, they can of course register and, and participate. Uh, we have a digital platform which is called Series Mania Plus, hmm. uh, which is uh, available and they can find the participants uh, list uh, online so they can contact and schedule the meeting in advance. Then um, for the biggest company, they can book uh, a private uh, meeting table or a private meeting lounge so they can uh, have uh, a dedicated and quiet space to do their meetings. This is very comfortable, but of course it has a cost. So it's not available for all kinds of, of companies. And, um, and then uh, for now, there, we don't have uh, any African pavilion. Mm -hmm. We have pavilion from other countries, like from uh, from Germany, from Spain, from other countries, uh, but not African yet, maybe in the future. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's also a good way to come with um, under, under the umbrella of the pavilion, of course. But uh, for now, we, we don't have it for, for Africa. Okay, and I'm conscious that the event obviously is based in France. Uh, what is the dynamic in terms of language? So is it a bilingual festival or is it predominantly French? No, it's in English. Everything we do, it's in English. We, it's a, we have the possibility to have a translation in the headphones for the conferences in French for the French people who are not uh, so uh, comfortable with, with English, but otherwise uh, it's 100% uh, English, which is basically the easiest way to to collaborate and to establish a collaboration internationally. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, the way that it's gone. Um, yeah. So one of the things that I have heard frequently, um, you know, as a result of the pandemic and post-pandemic is that audiences really engage with shorter content, you know, and so people were observing that shorter content, um, episodic type content was, you know, quite popular. So what would you really say is the case for, you know, content makers in terms of series, whether they be TV series or web series? Um, are there any particular trends that you yourself have noticed since the pandemic? Well, yes, it's true. It's true that uh, the, 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 the length of the episode tends to be shorter and also the number of episodes for season uh, tends to be uh, less than before. We have a lot of uh, four, uh, four episodes uh, series or six episode series, uh, maximum eight uh, before. So a few years ago, it could be 10 or 12 or whatever. And, uh, and uh, we have also less uh, returning show than before. It's uh, sometimes it's only one season and the show is, uh, is done. Mm -hmm. I think that, yes, it, it's a trend in, in the industry uh, that I can uh, see uh, in Europe uh, also. I don't know if it's linked to the pandemic, maybe. Uh, maybe people are a little bit tired of having uh, long-running uh, shows for... Uh, the, the model is shifting a bit, but... Uh, but it's, I, I don't know if, if it's just a trend of it, it, it will uh, continue in the next years. Yeah, I think, yeah, we all have to wait and see, really, don't we? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, do you think that there are any particular types of content or genres that um, audiences in Europe are particularly receptive to? Well, what we can see is that we have a lot of uh, thrillers and um, 
about so cock shows etc still uh, still the dominant genre in the market uh, it works very well in Europe um we can notice that we have more and more uh, female protagonists uh, in a, and it's kind of a trend to have uh, leading characters women female leading characters and it's uh, it's something which is a uh, which shows a change in the in the society also, and I think that it's uh, it's good to to notice. We have uh, quite a lot of period drama, but not set in the far past, mm -hmm. set in the recent past, like in the eighties or the nineties. Mm -hmm. Of course, I think that it, it's the generation of uh, uh, the you know of the generation of the people who write series now and also who watch series uh, now. You know, the, and so there is a sort of um, kind of wave of coming back to this uh, 18th and 19th uh, time. Um, yes, basically the, the, the trends that I can see this year are, are, are those one. More, more, also more and more of uh, stories uh, uh, concerning the, um, the, the, the ecological crisis and the concern about, you know, the future of our planet. This is very good. It's something that's happening more and more. Yeah, I can't believe that the 80s and 90s are now being regarded as uh, period pieces because making me feel very old. <laughs> yeah, me too, but... Uh... <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, do you have any particular thoughts about um, appetite in Europe for content from Africa? I think that... Uh, I think that... Uh, there, there is an interest in, definitely in the industry. It's also the reason why we developed this um, pitching session with uh, with the Realness Institute and also with, uh, with the CNC. For now, uh, let's be honest, it's not uh, the main part of the market. Um, I can see really a big success of an African show in, uh, in Europe or in a main channel, you know, in France, for example. But also thanks to the the global platform, uh, which gives access to content from all over the world, etc. I think that uh, the borders are opening a little bit, and uh, there will be more opportunities for good content to to travel. It also needs to meet the standards in terms of production value, uh, etc. of of the Western uh, TV shows. So. It's easier when the series comes from uh, like from South Africa or Nigeria, etc. It's not the case for all the countries in Africa now. It's there, there is still a gap in, in in the production value and the quality between certain countries and others. So it's difficult to say, but I hope that in the future we will have more show that will travel uh, in um, in Europe, to show from Africa that will find a success in Europe. Yeah, and off the top of your head, would you say that the the buyers who tend to come to Series Mania are mainly looking at a kind of European or Western market, or would you say they're buying for other parts of the world, like Asia or Africa or you know Latin America? They are looking for content from uh, from all over the world as the market is getting more and more global. Uh, Besides the pitching session from Africa, we will have, for example, a pitching session from Taiwan this year. So we we tend to provide to them uh, good projects uh, really from uh, from different countries. Um, then, as the event is more focused in, in it's based in Europe, of course, most of them will look for uh, mainly for uh, uh, European uh, content. But um, but as I said, I mean uh, the 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 world is changing. Uh, the the big streamers are are, uh, are looking for shows that uh, travels. Uh, we have seen the success of uh, uh, the Korean show uh, Squid Games uh, two years ago, and uh, it was a uh, it was a Korean show that uh, that made a huge success all, all over the world. So. It happens more and more, and so I'm confident that uh, buyers will look uh, to the quality of the content first, and not the country of origin. Let's say. Yeah, I, I hope so. And in conclusion, is there any advice or even tips that you would give, uh, generally to content makers who are watching this about 
um, preparing for serious mania or even engaging with it? Anything that you think would be particularly helpful for them to know? I don't know if they are willing to come to, to serious mania. I think that, uh, yes, the, the best is to prepare it in advance through our digital platform, where they can look what others are doing because we have all the projects that are uh, listed on our digital platform so they can have a look of what the others are producing too, what's in the pipeline, etc. It gives a good overview of, of the market. And then while they are, when, when they are in, in, uh, in Ceres Mania, maybe also try to enjoy some screenings of the festival to also have a look of what's, what's going on uh, in the, the series war, let's say. <laughs> Lovely. So I'm really pleased to hear that you have got an Africa initiative and that that's ongoing. Um, and even language wise that um, both obviously French speaking and English speaking uh, filmmakers can engage. Um, so yeah, very much hoping as a result of this that we get some more submissions from the continent. Um, yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, it would be great for us perhaps to start to see some offerings from parts of the continent that maybe aren't represented like Nigeria and South Africa um, and that can meet those international standards in terms of the production values. Yes, yes, definitely. And um, by the way, I forgot to mention, but uh, I also participated online to the pitching session of uh, the Durban film market, which is now a section about series. And uh, so I'm actively scouting also what's happening in, in Africa. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we will have more submission in the years to come. <laughs> Thank you so much, Francesco. Thank you very much for the interview. And uh, let's stay in touch soon. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.